Hey guys, welcome back to the series Fun Facts About Fasting. Today's episode 8 and in line with this week's theme of looking at fasting and the mind and the brain, we're going to be talking about fasting and the disease known as Alzheimer's in this episode. So let's get cracking. So we know from the face of it that with Alzheimer's disease, there is a slow progression in cognitive decline over time. Certain functions aren't as it was before, memory loss, memory ability, your cognitive capacity, all these type of neuronal and cognitive functions slowly wither and become lessened over time to the point where even simple tasks become unable to be performed. And you can see some of the kind of symptoms here. But what I want to go into is the notion of how does it occur in the first place and how can we actually prevent that onset using the notion of fasting where possible. But there's been a bit of a problem in terms of the actual realisation of what is the cause of Alzheimer's. So why don't we just talk about that for a moment. So towards the early part of 2000 in terms of years, there was this dismissive attitude where it was more of a gene-focused causation, so i.e. it was more or less inherited, more to do with changes in the gene expression as opposed to a person's diet, environmental factors, or even slight variance in the gene, one as important as it, as a Alzheimer's is disease is just due to old age, and that's it. That used to be the, the notion of Alzheimer's as a condition. But as you can see in the description box, I have a lot of links in terms of research that's been looked at. But there's a lot of, you can say, key papers that looked at massive amounts of scientists and researchers from around the world that submitted to NIH you can see it here, NIH, and they looked at the whole notion of actually diet and your environment play a crucial role in the causation of Alzheimer's disease. It's not just due to, because you're older, you're just going to get Alzheimer's. And that, although it was dismissed early on, is now widely seen as one of the key causations for Alzheimer's. And that maybe even 1% or even less than 1% of Alzheimer's cases is actually due to some sort of gene altering invent or you can say mutation in simple terms. Now unfortunately millions and millions of people suffer from Alzheimer's around the world especially within the US there's a high risk and high prevalence of Alzheimer's. But so the notion of diet and not ex exercise or even um, your environment in general has seen to be a big factor. What happens when you influence that or you change that towards Alzheimer's disease? So the key way to understand this is what happens in the brain that triggers this, you could say, cognitive decline. Now many people have looked at the notion of, from the gene point of view, are there certain genes that are related to Alzheimer's? So there was one gene in particular that a lot of scientists looked into, which was the APOE4 gene, you can see over here. Again, more, more details are in the description box below. But the notion that this gene was very important in transporting lipids, i.e. cholesterol in particular, to the brain. So when there was some kind of variant in this, unfortunately that caused some loss in that transport system which can lead to unfortunate cases within the brain. But more importantly, which is what this video is more about, is the other side of the causation for Alzheimer's disease, which is the notion of insulin resistance. Now this is why, funnily enough, Alzheimer's will also turn, and that, again it's been coined even recently as type 3 diabetes. Because there are stark similarities between type 2 diabetes, i.e. insulin resistance, insulin secretions causing a lot of problems and dysfunction in there, and uh, unfortunate cases it causes in terms of neuropathy, renopathy, so essentially damage to parts of the body. And with type 3 diabetes, which is what happens when it's in the brain, and how does it damage the brain? So that's why even though some people may argue about the name of Alzheimer's, it's also been termed type 3 diabetes again, Links are in the description box below too about why there was this link between the two. And that's why I want to talk about how fasting helps. Because when you look at it from the type 3 diabetes angle, there's a lot you can do to try and prevent the onset of Alzheimer's. Now, one of the main reasons where fasting, intermittent fasting can help is similar to the conditions and the reasons I've mentioned in this series so far. So reducing inflammation, or in this particular case, neuroinflammation, reducing oxidative stress, limiting the amount of insulin secretions that are occurring because insulin resistance in the brain is a key marker for Alzheimer's and cognitive decline. But there's more important, there's a more targeted reason why intermittent fasting is actually quite important and quite useful, but also how ketogenic diets can help 
in this particular context. So let me explain that now. When a person is fasting, we know that there is a switch between the energy sources that that person uses. So it switches from utilizing glucose and actually to the point where they start to use fats, so fatty acid metabolism, as an energy reserve or energy resource. One of the byproducts of that is ketones, and ketone body is also utilized by the body as a marker or you could say a precursor for energy use. And when the brain does that, it's been shown to the certain um, ketone bodies, so I think it's beta hydroxybutyrate here, which is one of the key ones, has been shown to be really useful as a therapeutic strategy to combat Alzheimer's disease and cognitive decline. So it's not just about preventing delay of onset, because we know when a person is on a fasted state and they're utilizing fatty acid metabolism, there's improved cognitive ability, there's improved recall, there's less chances of brain fog, or less chances of the environment that cause Alzheimer's over time. But it's been so beneficial that some have even utilized it as a therapeutic strategy to actually combat early onsets of Alzheimer's. Now, bear in mind that this is also and only particularly useful for those who have Alzheimer's disease, but not due to that APOE4 gene variant, as I mentioned earlier. So something that's potentially due to the kind of type 3 diabetes causation, as opposed to a gene causation, if that makes sense. So hopefully you're still with me on that notion. So that's where actually intermittent fasting can help. But then when you're utilizing ketogenic diet, you're further accelerating that fat burning capability and that fat burning scenario. And you're also utilizing those ketone bodies in higher amounts in this particular context. So the levels and amounts are also quite important. And these research articles I'll put in the description box talk about that in more detail. But I wanted this video to give you an idea of how does fasting actually help to reduce the likelihood of a condition known as Alzheimer's, so a neurological condition. But also how when a person is fasting, certain ketone bodies or certain molecules in particular have been shown to be a therapeutic strategy. It's amazing to think of just actually changing the way you eat. As I mentioned throughout what, this entire series, it is free. You're not buying a supplement or a product. It's changing the way you eat. It's been known essentially to look after your brain a lot better. So even though we're looking about the brain and the mind, and I mentioned conditions last week, imagine just changing the way you eat improves your brain's ability and also looks after it better, so it's less likely to develop the unfortunate case of Alzheimer's. So something to bear in mind, right? We all want to, of course, look after our brain better, be more productive, be more alert, be more focused. And there's a whole host of research looking at how being at a fastest state, in if it's done in the right way, can boost that ability. So I hope that's helped. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comment section below, or do let me know on Instagram. I'd love to have a chat with you in more detail and I hope to see you tomorrow for episode 9, one away from 10 episodes so far in this series. But take care, enjoy the rest of your evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.